Wow, I had a great time with some friends today, and I thought of the scripture when I was getting ready to do this video. Let no corrupt communication come out of your mouth, but that which is good for edifying, right? And uh, Jesus spoke to us about attitudes because he was speaking to us about words of life. The Beatitudes are all about attitudes to take on to have a blessed life, right? So... I, a couple of my friends have been outward scolders and some of them are inward scolders and who of us grew up in families that really didn't let corrupt communication come out of our mouth and the truth is we all do it even after I had a great time texting with my friends today I got tested myself so I usually do get tested in what I'm making videos about but great Great, I wanna keep moving on with the Lord. So I wanna read a couple of scriptures before I go to the text, but self-denial on behalf of others. I didn't actually put where the scripture is, but it says, now we who are strong in our convictions and faith ought to patiently put up with the weakness of those who are not strong and not just please ourselves. Let each one of us make it a practice to please his neighbor for his good, to build him up spiritually. For even Christ did not please himself. So we can either have an anointing that lifts Jesus up or an anointing that doesn't lift Jesus up and does damage, really. Um, Second Chronicles 10 tells a story about King Rohab Rohaboam. I'm, I'm going to slaughter the name here. He made a huge mistake. He wouldn't listen to the elders who said these words to him. And he cursed himself because he didn't listen. If you're kind to those people and please them and speak good words to them, then they'll be your servants forever. <clears throat> but the king rejected the advice which the elders gave him. Yeah, it came back to snare his very soul. And in Matthew 18, it says, if your brother sins, go show him his fault. Jesus is saying this. So we can win him or her. Um, Jesus is talking about that showing their fault to win them um and he also talked about condemning people as like sticking darkness right on our own soul when we do that we're not going to fare well galatians 6 says bear one another's burdens brother if anybody's caught in a sin you who are spiritual that is you who are responsive to the guidance of the spirit are to restore such a person in a spirit of gentleness, not with a sense of superiority or self-righteousness, keeping a watchful eye on yourself so that you're not tempted as well. So you don't go down into the ditch when you judge people the wrong way. <clears throat> so we were talking about scolding, inward scolding and outward scolding <laughs> in our text today. And when you look up the definition, you kind of get the idea that it means to relate to people out of how they make you happy or unhappy, unhappy scolding. Like a person, like personally. So in Hebrews 12, it says, your fathers chastened you after their pleasure, meaning they policed you for their own personal happiness, not to help you count the cost for your own benefit in kindness, you know, counting the cost. So what, so, you know, what, what we say is actually going to be seasoned with salt, have the right seasoning in it. Salt makes everything tasty or it's going to be corrupt. And therein is so important about what anointing we're really in, what spirit is really we're under the authority of when we're interacting with other people. And I had a couple of women actually practically, well, they were, they were both crying and crying for like meaningful crying, like, I'm so sorry for the times I've had the wrong anointing on you and I've affected you negatively. I mean, God hears that stuff. I mean, I know that he'll help those women because they've struggled a lot in their life, both of them that did that, and not seeing how having the right wrong anointing is affecting other people around them. And it can make people, it can make not only you sick and weak and go to sleep, but it's the devil's plan to make other people sick and we can go to sleep too. So that spirit of fault, find, fault finding is, and people, again, will either do that outwardly or they'll do it secretly. That kind of, I'm better than you and you're less than me. And 
it becomes the snare to our own soul that Jesus talked about. When you judge others the way you don't want to be judged, you condemn yourself. And, you know, a couple of these married women, I couldn't believe how many women were, were responding to this conversation today, but, you know, um, women are good at spanking men, right? <laughs> We can be spankers. We can even spank, you know, it's appropriate maybe to swat children. <laughs> it's not appropriate to swat a husband or friends. So um, there's a time to be angry. And Jesus said that, be angry and sin not. There's also a time to not rebuke a fool. You know, reprove a wise man and he'll be yet wiser Repute, reprove a fool and get to yourself a blot, especially if you start contending. There's no life in it at all. So, you know, what matters is if our anger is selfish anger or it's a righteous anger that may help somebody actually. By Sometimes I think it's good to show emotion. I think that's what we always have to ask ourselves is, Jesus, are you going to sign off on this? Are you okay with the emotion I exhibited with this person? And that's the problem because we, if we, we really need to be able and willing to judge our own selfish response, asking ourselves, is this selfish? Did this build somebody up or did it tear them down? And sometimes people that are terror downers, their mouths need to be stopped because it, it's the greater good for the whole, the whole. And because of the gender difference between women and men, I think there's, Proverbs 31 talks about the law of kindness was in her mouth. And I think in some ways there's more power in actually being kind to people than being hard-hearted, you know, being con condescending. So we, we have actually great, power to influence men by being meek and lowly. I mean, the Bible says that. What if that's a greater power, humility? I'm sure it is. Than pride, Jesus said it, right? So when we're under a wrong a spirit, we're under false authority. And there is no real power, but demonic power under false the false authority of control to get our own way. It's a demonic spirit that tears relationships apart. And that scolding, condescending spirit that belittle, belittles other people, it can damage people, damage children. And it's not that we won't get emotional at times, but we need to adjust our spirits so people know that we are for them, even at times when we're against them. But the word of life says, scorners can't hear, neither can slaves to the flesh because they lie and they don't tell the truth. It's it's really important just to judge ourselves because there's times to rebuke people sharply so they'll be sound in the faith, but not with a condescending, personally offended soul. The words of our mouth and the meditations of, of our heart, the devil will use to snare us if we're not judging having a right spirit and a free spirit. So what we bind to others ends up binding to us. And when the law of kindness isn't in our mouth, and when we don't practice the Beatitudes that Jesus talks about, the attitudes that are flying the plane of our soul, right? We'll go into strife and performance. That's the problem. Once we do something wrong with our mouth, or even inwardly, where we're not having a right spirit towards our, in our thoughts towards other people, we're going to start performing. We can't help it. We'll go into the wrong dimension of, of life, strife, self-will, confusion. Um, it's really, the devil's always trying to snare our soul and he can only snare our soul if we don't make good judgments. So the Bible talks about speaking the truth in love, judging ourselves so we don't get sick and we can go to sleep. Let the words of your mouth and the meditation of your heart be acceptable in God's sight. That's what really matters a lot more than what we think, the different, it's the difference between light and dark, the reflection that we're giving of the Father of light 
or the father of darkness. And if we don't take care of our health, you know, spiritually, physically, nobody's going to do that for us. Good judgment is crucial to keep our eyes on Jesus, spiritually and carnally. We have to protect the light in us. Only if we lift up the right spirit do we draw others to Jesus. Scolders don't see the wiles of the devil. People that use false authority to get their point across to people that exalt themselves and belittle others are not lifting Jesus up and they're not drawing people to Jesus in how they speak to other people, right? And the sad part about that is we, we actually don't see the snare that we stick on other people or is going to stick on us, even if it's just blindness, deafness, dumbness. So, uh, let's see. I, I was talking to one of my friends who reserved the right to smite her husband and degrade him like a bad little boy. She had the spanking ministry towards her husband and she thought it was okay. And all it does is act out the wrong anointing that divides, conquers. It, lead, it, just, it just is so destructive when we don't have any understanding of the spirit that we're submitting ourselves, servants, to obey. Because we end up degrading each other like little bad children. Even if we are, the commandment isn't to put others down and exalt ourselves. It's to build each other up in our most holy faith. So Satan... His only plan is to divide, and, to divide and conquer, right? So he'll divide us from God, from each other. And when we use a false authority to overcome somebody else's false authority, we're both going down. Back to the be attitudes, overcome evil with good. When you're being oppressed by false authority, someone with the wrong spirit or anointing, do good. That's how we become the child of the Most High. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who despitefully use you. Pray for those people that look down on you and, and can't hear what you're saying. I, I heard this guy talking. Gene was watching a TV show, and it was actually really powerful because he was talking about praying in the Spirit. Because we're going to feel sick inside. If you have a good spirit and somebody has a bad spirit, it's going to affect you spiritually. That's what both of these women were crying about today on the phone. And you know what came to me even before I made this video is how important it is to pray in the Spirit. It releases that stress. And then, and, and when we pray in the Spirit, we can gain a right spirit and get to the place where we can bless that person, not take it personally. It's kind of like expelling the darkness, praying in the Spirit. It's really important, you know, so... It's how we, I think, overcome evil with good. Even what Jesus said is we become the child of the Most High when somebody has a wrong spirit and we have a right spirit back with them. That's the whole purpose and intention of God in saving us, right? Not rendering evil for evil. Dark authority with dark authority, right? Or just let people be oppressive and treacherous and not... Remember how maybe we were oppressive and treacherous and talk to him, right? So that's how we take a trip into the darkness when the meditation of our heart isn't right and the words of our mouth aren't right. And, you know, when we go into the dark, it's really simple to get out of it. Tell the Lord you're sorry. Tell the people you're sorry and walk back into the light. And, you know, it's been pretty exciting to watch women actually start to really understand this. Because the commandment isn't to put others down and exalt ourselves, right? I said that already, but uh, let's see. I think this got repeated. Sorry, I'm kind of looking at notes here. So I think that this third page is just a repeat. So I'm going to let go of this video now. And I, and I pray that when you get stressed out, because other people have a wrong anointing, that you remember your own wrong anointing so you can recover them in a spirit of meekness so you don't damn yourself, stick darkness to you. And when you are in the presence of scorners 
and, and fools that won't hear a rebuke, you need to just pray for them and bless them, not curse them, so you can be the child of the Most High. Amen.